Hi everyone and welcome to the Shrine of Anubis. If you're new here, welcome and if you have been here before, welcome back and nice to see you again. So, the moments that you have all been waiting for, in this video I will be answering a lot of questions that I did not know I had before I even started this series, Intimacy with Anubis, and during this series. This video could be divided into two parts, it depends, uh, so we'll see how it goes. So I do have everything laid out in here on the computer screen with all of your comments in all of my past videos. I love how YouTube has become smarter. <laughs> and easier to manage all comments at once in one screen from all videos. I find that very interesting and it's going to be easy for me to get through them rather than jumping into each video and go around to look for them. So some questions that I will be addressing now at the beginning of this video will not have any context because they may not be related to this series at all but as we continue to dive in we will see more uh related questions into the series so let's see what happens the first question is I have a question. Does Anubis get bored of similar offerings? I feel like I give him chocolate and tea too much and I don't want him to get bored of it. So let me heart this comment. <laughs> Even though it was done seven months ago, but I'm back, I'm back and I'm here and I'm responding to everything. So first of all, no, he does not. Remember that everybody offers different things. Some people or many people may have one thing or two or more in common when it comes to offerings that they make to him. But it doesn't really matter because in the end, what Anubis is consuming is the energy behind the offering. So I think of it that way. He consumes the energy behind the offering. Whether this offering of food and a drink has a sexually charged intention or maybe an intention for health and wellness, he will absorb the intention that you put into the offering. Of course, uh, your devotion and your love as well. He does receive that through these offerings. And of course, if he likes the offering itself due to the nature of it, he's also going to enjoy that as well. So don't feel like you have to vary things up all the time and don't feel bad for offering the same thing because I did the same thing myself as well back in the day and I still do <laughs> nothing has changed <laughs> so, I hope that answers that question so the next one let's see uh, I'm gonna heart this comment as well who is a, uh, let me see. I probably might edit this video, but maybe not. Honestly, I feel it's going to take me forever to edit everything out. So let's see. What is the next question? Is it strange that I have an attraction to Anubis? Okay, so this is a very popular question I have gotten for for the past six months. This was the first question I've ever gotten um, before in my YouTube channel. And honestly... It's a very popular concern and it is not strange that you feel attracted towards Anubis, whether in a friendly way, sexual way, in a familiar way, like, like a sibling or, or like a familiar somebody. It's definitely not strange. It's not weird. It's not something to be afraid of or be intimidated by. If you get involved in pagan communities where pagans work with the pa uh, Egyptian pantheon, you might encounter many Anubis devotees and they will all tell you the same thing. That Anubis is very welcoming and that there is nothing to be afraid of when it comes to him. Again, just like you're saying in your uh, comment, uh, yeah, some people definitely feel intimidated by him, but he is very protective and loving. And that has been my experience as well uh, with Anubis. 
uh, in the past almost 11 years. He's very loving and protective, sometimes territorial, just a tiny, tiny little bit. But that is to be expected with an alpha male, uh, so to speak. So let's see, is there a next question? Because uh, there's just so many comments that I'm just scrolling through them. Again, these are all the comments on all of my videos for the past year or so. And it's quite a bit to go through. Uh, oh my goodness, a Seth devotee. Oh crap. <laughs> that sounds like trouble. <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh, music recommendations. Fantastic. Ooh, okay. I'll look into that as well. Let's see. Hmm. Honestly, I am seeing a lot of beautiful comments in here with you guys uh, giving me compliments about uh, my work and my videos. So I really, I really, really appreciate you guys taking out the time to reach out to me and leave me your experiences as comments and how my work has helped you. And it's very beautiful to to see all the, all these uh, positive comments in my channel. Let's see. Uh, oh my gosh. Oh, overcoming anxiety. Oh gosh, that is so beautiful. Let me heart this comments. <laughs> okay, guys, I, I will suggest you to go get a snack or a drink or something because I feel this video is going to be quite long and it might be the first part uh, of two parts, maybe. Uh, okay, we have... Uh, one of my subscribers led me to go here to this channel to know more about Anubis. I am from India and I am attracted towards the power of Anubis and worshipping him for the last three days. Could you please tell me whether I can worship him for all my needs such as health and wealth? Could you please help me out how to worship him? So when it comes to Anubis, it doesn't matter where you're from around the world. Anubis is very welcoming towards anybody and everybody. Straight people, people from LGBTQ community. I am bisexual myself and uh, I'm kind of open about it now uh, when it comes to that aspect of myself. And Anubis is very welcoming. So I would suggest that... Can you please tell me whether I can worship him? Of course. Anubis is not someone who rejects certain people for being from certain places around the world. I know that there are dramas between countries and certain countries or between certain religions. But if you look beyond religion and if you follow a spiritual path rather than a organized religious path, you will have more freedom within yourself to not be afraid to expand beyond your spirituality and work with other entities such as Anubis. So my suggestion for you would be to put a glass of water for him, light a candle, and ask him for guidance. Ask him for guidance through your dream state. Ask him for guidance through some way or shape or form that's easy for you to understand that Anubis is communicating with you. So in my mother's case, for example, with Hecate, Hecate would send her signs through certain posts on Facebook or through YouTube, through recommendation or recommended videos. And my mother would not be looking up anything related to the topic and she would get the answer in the form of YouTube titles or Facebook posts. So depending on what you're most sensitive on, depending on the psychic senses or physical senses or what you're more uh, prone to receive messages from, whether social media or your job or by watching television, they will send you signs through that which is easy for you to know and learn that you are receiving messages from somebody. But my suggestion again would be put a glass of water with a candle. Doesn't matter the color. It's fine. 
white is neutral um can't really go wrong it's universal so it doesn't matter if you don't have a black candle blue candle red candle what have you or even a yellow candle to represent the gold that he wears it doesn't matter so a neutral white candle is fine again Anubis doesn't really go crazy about details like he's not a greedy guy well <laughs> maybe in other aspects like you know getting it on maybe but when it comes to other things he doesn't like it when you sacrifice yourself in order to please him he does not appreciate it when you sacrifice certain aspects of your life to please him he, he it, this is a form of self-sabotage so if you're unable to do something bigger for Anubis do not feel self-conscious about this because he is not a judgmental god even though that is kind of his role in the underworld within uh, you know uh, with the heart and the feather and, and the weight of the hearts and against the feather of Maat I do know he's got that role. However, when it comes to offerings, he's not really that picky or judgmental about it, if at all. So if you receive judgment and like some energy that feels like repelling or something, that may not be a newness at all. So I hope that helps you out. And of course, if you offer the water with the candle, you can ask him for guidance and for his help in a certain topic of your life. And then watch for the signs. So let me see. Thank you for all. Oh, this is so sweet. Okay. I believe that Ampu Anubis is the son of Osiris that was conceived by Nephthys, who is wife of Seth. Right. There's That's a very interesting topic. It's a whole nother can of worms because... There are two different theories when it comes to Anubis and his origin. Is he the son of Osiris or Seth? I personally believe that Nephthys wanted to be with her sister's husband, Osiris. I, they're all siblings, and by the way, uh, in, in case you don't know. And because Seth represents the desert, doesn't he? I could be wrong again. Uh, and he represents what sandstorms or something like that. So the desert is a symbol of being infertile. And I could be wrong again about all this because it's been a while since I last read that in 2013, actually. This has been a long ass time ago. So assuming that Seth was not able to do the thing to, you know, help her get pregnant. Uh, it makes sense that this whole fight happened and this whole conflict happened and took place and that she had a new wish with Osiris. Personally, I believe in this theory that Anubis is the son of Osiris. Especially though, because Anubis was first the god of the underworld and then Osiris took over later on. I'm not sure if this makes any sense or if they could be connected somehow to their actual um, connection as father and son. I don't know if that is related at all, but that's an interesting theory to think about as well of how Anubis conceded that role to Osiris. Um, and then Anubis became the god of embalming. And um, I forgot what else. <laughs> I'm so all over the place tonight, guys. Please, please forgive me. Um, okay, I believe I addressed these two questions a very long, long, long time ago. A video about offerings? Yes, I have a video of offerings somewhere in my channel as well. You have beautiful hands. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness, sir. I know you from somewhere. <laughs> Does Anubis like cinnamon and iced tea? I can offer him that. Of course, Anubis will be welcoming of anything and everything that you're able to offer him. However, however, sometimes he may not consume the offering because he 
Something I've noticed with Anubis is that he's not a fan of rejecting things. So when he does, he tends to be polite about it. And the offering will not show any signs of rotting or anything. It will look the same. One time I offered him wine. He didn't like it. The wine stayed the same way for a whole entire week. You know that alcohol evaporates, right? But this wine never did. And as soon as I offered him a beer, uh, it was the Blue Moon Tangerine, that hellish beer that I'll never have in my life. Usually I open the offering, I take a sip of it, and then I pour it on the glass and I leave it for him. I died 10 times when I had to take those five sips of beer. But he liked it. He loved it. And I'm like, okay. So he, he will definitely know Holly. So I would suggest that you test things out. But cinnamon... Cinnamon is definitely something that he surely will enjoy. Iced tea, I am sure that he will like it because it's a nice refreshing offering. So I'm sure that he will like that as well. Uh, let's see. Okay, so Holly responded, maybe in the same video or another one. This video was very helpful for me. I feared I had to buy alcohol for Anubis. But thanks for assuring me that I don't have to do that. Exactly. No, not at all. So with Anubis, it's what you can offer to him. And if you feel comfortable with it and if you're able to afford it. Anubis is not a demanding DT uh, in that regard when it comes to offerings. So don't feel bad if you're not able to <gasps> offer him an altar made of gold and, and diamonds and rubies and sapphires and, and emer emeralds. and No, 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 no. He's not like that. In fact, he, he feels uncomfortable when you try to overdo or overgive and neglecting yourself along the way. So make sure that you are taking care of yourself along the way and that you're also focusing on your priorities, one of them being yourself, which should be number one, and you'll keep him happy. As long as you put yourself first, you're, you're going to keep him happy. Let's see. I, hi, I found you today based on uh, some information about Anubis. I feel I got some connection with him. I feel as a very intelligent and powerful. Oh, I feel him as a very intelligent and powerful DT. And since I connect to him with no fear, but respect and love, I feel like it is beginning the beginning of something. Maybe some advice from you if it's possible. Thank you. So when it comes to working with Anubis, you have to really put your intuition to practice. Because Anubis is not a talker. So you, if you do card readings, if you do some sort of divination to communicate with him or even meditation to connect with his energy, you might not get a lot of words from him, but you might get impressions or visuals like in my case. In my case, they're <laughs> sexual in nature, but they might be different for you. And this is why I always, in my tarot readings with other people, I ask them to exercise their intuition or whenever I do intuitive artwork for them, I ask them to utilize their intuition when I send them the portrait before I send them the meditation notes of that portrait. And a lot of the times I've had this happen, many of my clients for artwork have had the same intuitive hints and messages that I have been typing and writing down for them to send over the meditation notes for them. So definitely uh, some advice that I can give to you right now on the spot. Look after yourself. Look at the things that you are not happy with about yourself because Anubis will bring that all up to you for you to look at and to overcome or to understand in order to overcome or simply overcome if you've been denying this aspect for so long and it's time to face some bullshit. I mean, we all have things in our life that we don't want to admit to ourselves, whether we are aware of it or not, 
that's a whole nother can of worms. But Anubis will take care of bringing that up for you so that you can be aware of it, look at it in the eye and see what can I do about this? And how can I improve and how can I overcome this? So that is my advice to you. Feel free to check out the rest of my YouTube channel because I do have a bunch of videos on how to connect with Anubis, what type of offerings you can give to him, how can you tell if he is liking the offerings or not, as well as a bunch of other information that I have as well in my YouTube channel that I feel is going to be very helpful and useful for you as well. Uh, I love Anubis and I have an altar for him. Do you have Facebook? No, I do not. Well, I do have an art page uh, titled Zion Zeta. So facebook.com forward slash Zion Zeta official. But I have had it abandoned for about, what, seven months or so? Because I did leave Facebook for a very long time. And I just returned about a week ago to that shit show of a website. <laughs> but it doesn't really have anything in Nubis related. I do have an Instagram, which I also don't use. It's simply Shrine of Anubis, where you can maybe once in a blue moon see a new post of me once in a blue moon. Usually not related to Anubis because I don't know how to use Instagram with Anubis. That is something that he's never told me about, but I decided to secure the name just in case it got stolen. <laughs> but now I have an Instagram that I don't know what to use for. And here I am. <laughs> oh, Jesus, the social medias are crazy. Let's see. Okay, so here we have somebody making offerings. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, suggesting offerings. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Barefoot wine. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, I can find that. Interesting. Yeah. So Anubis, uh, this is a comment from a fellow Anubis devotee where they are sharing some other offerings that you can make for Anubis. French vanilla which I adore. I do have incense in French vanilla. Sage, I was not aware of that. Barefoot wine, kerosene to drink and for light. Uh, warm water, try putting a statue of him sitting in warm water. Interesting. Ambiguous jewelry, the colors black, gold, pink, red, and any color that's dark. Smooth instrumental music of all kinds. Oh, I do have a Spotify playlist though. Uh, you can find my username, Zion Zeta, in there, where it's simply titled Anubis. And in there, I put many different songs, but they're all either metal-based, but they all have one element in common, and that is the Middle Eastern sound or vibe to some of these metal-based songs. There's also some other songs in there that are also smoother, and this playlist that I have on Spotify is for devotional purposes. So whether I am meditating with him or I am belly dancing for him, which never happens, I do have that collection of music that reminds me of his energy. So that's a very good suggestion of music as well. He likes to read philosophy and poetry, Shakespeare. Uh, he likes Da Vinci paintings, architecture, ceiling. He also likes the fur. Oh, my Lord. I know. I agree. I so agree, Antonio, with that comment. <laughs> oh, my God. It's so funny because it's true. Oh, my goodness. That is very interesting. Okay. So, let's see. Uh, oh, wait a second. Is this TOS? Can I... Can I share this? I don't think so. This, so. this sounds personal. This sounds personal. This is somebody's experience with Anubis since they were a child. So I'm not going to share it uh, because I feel that's more, it's more personal and private. But yeah, I'm also grateful that he is also in your life and being very present ever since you were a child, White Cat. And thank you so much for sharing your experience with me. I appreciate it. Uh, I was wondering about the sexual aspect. Does he push your boundaries or... Okay, 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 guys. Okay, everybody. We're getting there now. <laughs> We're getting there now. <laughs> okay, 
All right, let's restart. I was wondering about the sexual aspect. Does he push your boundaries or experiment or shock you? I'm still learning about him. Interesting because I did have an experience with him one time where he wanted to ride me from behind. And I was kind of weirded out about it because I didn't really feel comfortable. Not because of him, but because I felt embarrassed because of program patterns, demonization of sexuality, and certain things like, oh, if you do this, you're going to go to hell. If you do that, you're going to go to hell. If you say this or do that or whatever, you're going to go to hell. Everybody, every single one of you are going to hell. And because of this, I felt uncomfortable with him. And so he was trying to like look at me and make me make eye contact with him. Again, he's not someone of many words. So he usually communicates through his gaze. And this is something interesting and maybe a little bit weird for you guys, but... The communication between Anubis and I can be quite telepathic at times um, in the sense of perceiving thoughts and impressions that I know are not my own, which is why sometimes I get hit with a sexual wave out of nowhere and it's because of him. Whether it's in the dream state, astral state, or awake, while I am connecting with his energy, this can happen. Anubis has not tried to push my boundaries as of yet, but I do feel that the closer I get with him, the more that I work with him or meditate to connect with him, I am sure that he will start to push me further into other aspects of our sexual connection. Uh, it's only a matter of time. But it is very likely that he will do that to you if you are in that type of dynamic or connection with him as well. It's just that some people are more ahead than me or not. It depends. It doesn't matter in, in where you're at. Uh, we are all different flowers. So we all bloom at different uh, p uh, paces. So we all take our time. Again, don't just go through life, grow through life, which is what this uh, sweater says. And it takes time. So you could be an orchid. I could be a rose. Somebody else could be a daisy or whatnot. We're not all going to develop at the same time. Same thing with our connections with our deities and, and our spirituality and things like that. So let's see. He loves chocolate, but he's part canine. Remember that Anubis is a god. He's not a literal dog. So I think that's the answer. <laughs> Remember, if we look at it that literal, then it makes no sense that they're considered to be gods. If we're going to reduce them into, into that, if that makes sense. So... There you have it. <laughs> okay, let's see. He told me that he doesn't want me to see him as a god, but as a humble, fatherly figure to work with. And and during we told me to come back. Oh my gosh, that is so sweet. Oh, this is so sweet. I've been ignoring his signs for over 10 years as just imaginations, but he persists in incredulous ways. I would say the signs are fake, but at the time, I was very Christian, and I never thought twice about Anubis until he showed up in dreams talking to me multiple times. I even rejected him when he chose me, but he earned my respect. As pompous as that sounds, I don't really bow to God. I understand that. I, I understand that due to my previous catholic side and refusing of bowing down in, in church i was i was that kid i was that kid so i understand i understand but i'm glad that you've been able to accept him into your life and that you're now uh, working with him um and having him present in your life 
yeah, he can be very in your face. He can be very literal about how he gives out signs and communications. He doesn't need to speak to get his point across. I love the God Anubis. I have started trying to work with him as a beginner witch. Oh, congratulations. Congratulations. Welcome to the club. I hope all goes well with that. That's going to be interesting. <laughs> but Anubis will got you. <laughs> I'm a Cancer and born in July. I have a big series of problems with my family. I'm in a spiritual path for only three years. Last two years, problems were so big. I saw big fires at July and twice. Oh, okay. To my paternal village where my family lives and without any invocations. So I was really heartbroken from for them and I still am. So I now know that Anubis takes care of me. Oh, so Anubis is giving you premonitions. Oh, I'm so sorry about the fires that have happened to uh, your family members, though. I really, really am sorry about that. But. It's interesting that Anubis has been warning you about it. So in a sense, I I agree. He is protecting you. He is watching over you and he is taking care of you. I so, also, I'm an artist and I paint sigils for offerings and I call my one dog, I post. I love Anubis. He is part of me and he is so kind. Oh, that is so gorgeous. That is beautiful. That's fantastic to read. I love that. Anubis has dark, clever, sharp sense of humor and always add the point. Yes, I agree. I agree. I agree. I agree. <laughs> I agree so much. I love to pray. Usually I don't ask nothing else except strength and courage. But when I ask something, I have it in six, in six days. That's the power of magic. You don't really need guys to have like a huge ass altar or like um, or anything to do your work, to do your magic, to practice your craft. Because in the end, everything that you have in your altar are tools for helping you to focus on your magic and to help you direct that magic into your target. Whether that's yourself, your family, an enemy, however you work. Uh, these are tools to help you to do the thing. But in the end, you don't really need to be that fancy of having a golden chalice or um, a silver plate or this and that. As long as you have yourself and your own inner magic and you are in tune with yourself, you don't need anything else. And I believe that this is the end of this video that is divided in three parts holy goodness jesus christ on the bike we are done <laughs> so i did address some comments that had nothing to do with this series and then the comments that had to do with this series as well as some wonderful questions and beautiful feedback that i got from all of you guys maybe seven months later six months five months later <laughs> I'm so sorry about that, but I finally was able to address all of them how I want it. And my intention is that you find all these videos helpful and useful um, for you and your journey on your path, on your practice, on your magic. And with all of that said, I do believe that this could be the conclusion for this series unless i get more questions and comments once all these three videos have been posted so let me know down below in the comment section so this past minute will be repeated on the three videos as well for reference so that you know that I am bringing this series to an end, but I am still accepting questions before I fully close it down. So you still have time in these three videos that I'll be uploading to let me know if you have any further questions or concerns or feedback that you want to give to me in regards to this series. So with all of that said, I want to thank you all so much for watching this video. You will see this outro three times in a row. That's fine. <laughs> Multitasking. Uh, work smarter, not harder. And yeah, before I let you guys go, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. 
click on the bell button and click on see all so that you can get all the notifications of any future uploads that I'll be making on this channel. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.